Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me where we are talking charging the Hummer EV. Now I've already made a video about how much it costs to charge the Hummer EV and it was very expensive. But today we're talking about how long it takes, the charging peak, and the charging curve. Now this took a lot of different charging sessions to really map the overall picture of the Hummer EV's charging curve. And uh, yeah, I, I think you'll find it super interesting. So A, this is the fastest charging EV we've ever tested. Over 360 kilowatts of peak charging power delivered to the vehicle. But as I always say, peak power doesn't really matter. It's all about the curve and that's where the hummer ev is a extremely impressive but also b extremely unimpressive so we have a lot to dig into here we're talking about the biggest battery available with the ultium platform this is the 212 kilowatt hour usable although i've been able to pull 213 kilowatt hours out of it uh, that's the usable capacity. Gross capacity could be anywhere from 220 to 250 kilowatt hours. I hear differing results all around. So this is basically charging the biggest battery in a mass production, you know, EV that someone can go out and buy. And I think you'll find it pretty interesting. So let's dig into the topic and talk big power numbers. This is not going to be a Nissan Leaf video where we're excited about 30 kilowatts. <laughs> this is crazy numbers. So behind me playing in the background is a zero to 100% charging session, just to give you an idea of, you know, sort of the visual layouts of this. Now I actually did five individual charging tests on this, playing around with different temperatures, preconditioning to chargers, actually different charging hardware as well to really map the overall picture of the Hummer EV. And I think we've done a pretty good job. I think we have a good understanding of how this thing charges. Which is interesting because my friend Tom Malagny, if you don't know of his channel, take a look at State of Charge here on YouTube. Tom is really one of the EV charging gurus of our time. And Tom has done some similar charge testing with the Hummer EV, similar setup procedures. But on the vehicles that he's tested, he's actually had a really hard time to get a solid charging curve out of it. Now I'm lucky because I had the car for a couple weeks and I was able to really figure it out and get it into all of the right parameters. And I feel we have a pretty good, I would say, understanding of how it charges after our tests. But I do just want to mention very weird behavior on Hummer EV, almost vehicle specific. He's tested a few. I've tested this one. This one seemed to like to be charged, um, but ran into many issues. You'll see just throughout this whole session, uh, and we're going to pull up the data here in just a moment. It really charges fast down low. I mean, you plug this sucker down at you know, any, anything below 30%, you're well over 300 kilowatts. You're just getting all the juice. But there seems to be thermal restrictions. It's either too hot or too cold, and it really needs to be in that perfect temperature window uh, to achieve fast, fast charging. Now, thankfully, the Hummer EV actually doesn't cold gate very much because it's got such a big battery pack where the C rate of any of this charging speed isn't actually all that impressive. That's the big thing here. 360 kilowatts on a Hummer EV is like way less stress than a Taycan charging at 270 kilowatts, just in terms of battery pack capacity to charging power. So while the numbers here are big, you have to think about we're filling up such a large battery pack that nothing's actually being stressed that hard, except for the cabling. And what I wanted to talk about a little bit was how the Hummer EV charges uh, just as its strategy before we actually get into the hard numbers. And that's where I think this is very impressive. The Hummer EV is built on Ultium platform, of course, right? So it uses their permanent magnet motors, it uses their battery cells, and then these uh, Ultium platform cars can basically take their assortment, their parts bin, and arrange them however they want. So Hummer EV has two motors in the back, one motor in the front, double stacked battery. It's balls to the wall. It's got everything you can get. The thing is, those subcomponents also need to work in different platforms and different sizes in different voltage ranges. So normally the Hummer EV is actually a 400 volt class of vehicle and it's a relatively low one. It's actually like 350, 360 volts nominal, somewhere around there, really low voltage. And what that allows for is the drivetrain, the AC compressor, uh, the 12 volt DC to DC booster, all of your low voltage components can pretty much work 
on that 350, 400 volt system architecture. The thing is, the higher voltage applications when we talk about eGMP cars, Tycon, and now the Ultium stuff, the main benefit, same with Lucid, of course, high voltage, is a little bit of efficiency with a Hummer EV with a battery this big, doesn't really matter while driving, efficiency while driving. The big benefit is charging power. Of course, with higher voltage means you need less current to achieve the same power level. And that's sort of the magic of Hummer EV. What it does when it plugs into a charger that can actually output up to a thousand volts is it takes its battery pack, it's double stack that operates in parallel. You'll hear a contactor that goes ka-chunk and it actually operates in series, which effectively doubles your operating voltage. The cool part about this is it isolates the drivetrain, it isolates other components from actually that higher voltage. So those don't need to be upgraded from a cost perspective. That's why it's done this way. It's engineering for cost across multiple platform. What's really hard about this though is actually getting the AC compressor, the 12 volt DC to DC to operate in multiple wide voltage ranges. So I just wanna say props to the GM team for getting all of the components that need to operate, the high voltage components that need to operate in 400 volt and 800 volt class to do this. Um, now there's still more charge testing I wanna do with the Hummer EV. I wanna plug it into the, an EVGO station. Big fan of EVGO Delta units for high power ap operation because they actually show the power, uh, the, the current of course, and the operating charging voltage throughout the entire session. I just, of course, never enough time with these things. I was using the new generation four, I believe, Electrify America hardware, full BTC uh, here in uh, Loveland, Colorado. That's actually all of the charging sessions you'll see the data from are all from the brand new hardware. And uh, these this hardware pumps the juice, no question. It's got, it's got all the juice. Uh, so pretty impressive there. I just want to briefly touch on some other voltage bumping strategies just to help clear things up a little bit because I hear some miscommunication in the comment section from time to time. Uh, there's two other ways to boost voltage on uh, charging hardware that can't go up that high. For example, version two superchargers, I believe version three superchargers as well, uh, can actually operate at a thousand volts. Uh, there's also older 50 kilowatt chargers, for example, that can't go up to a thousand volts. So you still need to charge these high voltage uh, cars, Tycon, Lucid Air, uh, what is it, Ionic 5, EV6, uh, GV60, all of these 800 volt class of vehicles still need to charge on older hardware. And so what they do is they have different ways to bump the voltage up. Hummer EV takes the pack, puts it in series. Tycon actually, well, I should say when the Hummer plugs into a low voltage one, it just keeps the packs in parallel operation, which is smart, easy, no extra uh, boosting needed. When Tycon does it, Tycon has an onboard booster. I believe standard is 50 kilowatt, upgrade is 150 kilowatt from Porsche. That actually splits the pack voltage in half. And then, uh, you know, you can take all the current from the charger and it bumps up the, the voltage uh, by exactly twice as much. And that works pretty well. The problem is you still have, especially at older 100 amp maximum chargers, you're at really low voltage there. You're not getting much power. You might be getting 38 to 42 kilowatts. The magic secret sauce here is what uh, the Kia Hyundai engineers have done with eGMP, where they use actually the rear inverter to say, hey, charger, what's the maximum voltage you can work at? I'm just going to emulate that and then give me all the current. So even if it's only a 100 amp charger, but it can operate 100 amps at 500 volts, and again, chargers have internal curves, this is just an example, you'd get 50 kilowatts with that because it, it can basically emulate any voltage you want. And that is really magical. The Wonder Box from Lucid, I believe, works the same way. Very magical, really cool stuff. I'll also have, also have a full Lucid Air charging video coming to you in the next few days. Really excited to share that one because I did a lot of testing on that car. So with all that out of the way, it's time to get into digging into the numbers on the Hummer EV. Let's go evaluate how this thing charges from zero to 100%, 10 to 80, 20 to 80, all the stuff in between, different temperatures. Took quite a bit of work, but I think we figured it out and I can't wait to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Is this impressive or is it just not enough when you have a battery this big? Let's see.
Well, you join me in spreadsheet mode now where we're talking charging curves, charging power, and all of the dis different testing that we've done. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the different tests, but you join me on the screen. This is from a previous test. You guys have seen this. I'll of course make this document fully available to you uh, in the description below. But this is from a test where we talked about how much it costs to charge the Hummer EV, about a hundred bucks rack rate. Uh, on Electrify America, 43 cents per kilowatt hour. Of course, we've seen more expensive chargers than that and less expensive chargers than that. Uh, certainly would highly recommend uh, charging this thing on EVgo if you can, because they charge by the minute in most places and it's like half price. Uh, I really think EVgo needs to, um, uh, that was actually the EA's per minute rate, but I really think EVgo needs to work on their pricing strategy to a kilowatt hour blend because it's really cheap. It's like 21 or 22 cents per minute on EVgo. Uh, and it costs like nothing to charge your Hummer. So if you have a Hummer EV, go there because it'll be real cheap. Uh, but let's head over to the actual charging curves. That's what we're getting into here. And what I've done is as typical, the leftmost column here is state of charge indicated. So zero to 100%. And very typical with other electric cars from GM that we've tested, they tend to complete before 100%. Again, when we're getting into the minutia of, you know, let's just say a three or 4% range, there's always a bit of sway. Uh, sometimes the cars read voltage to measure state of charge and that charging voltage for such a long period of time kind of confuses it. We talk a lot about BMS sway, BMS getting confused. That happens very frequently with GM stuff, either on the bottom end when we're doing range tests, especially with bolts. Sometimes they'll run out at 1%, just stop moving. Uh, and charging, sometimes they'll complete at 98, 99% state of charge instead of 100. Uh, and that's just the nature of, of the way that they're calibrated. So you have charging power on the left-hand side over here on your state of charge, I should say, not charging power. The charging power from one, two, three, four, five different individual tests are shown across the top. You'll see I did a full baseline. Whenever I test a car, I always do a baseline test. That's typically preconditioned, okay to the charging station. Hummer EV has manual battery preconditioning, as well as I believe automatic preconditioning when a station is set in the system inside. So very happy to see that. Although I don't think you need to precondition the Hummer EV for anything less than a 350 kilowatt charger or if it's really cold. With such a big battery, the cold doesn't really affect it so much. Uh, when, when charging. So I would say don't precondition it unless it's just a frozen brick. There's just no need. Uh, so of course I did the full zero to 100 test and that is this blue line on this chart over here. Uh, and one thing that I thought was very interesting was we saw this big dip down to about 100 kilowatts. Typically when I see this type of movement, this type of dip, when I'm doing charging sessions, I'm going, okay, we're gonna have to go back, redo this and see what's going on. Typically thermal related. And sometimes it's hard to know if it's thermals from the charging station or thermals from the car. Uh, the fans were ripping on the Hummer EV, but it was cold out. It was like 40 degrees outside. Uh, but again, battery was warm and charging very fast and heat up. Uh, not necessarily the whole battery pack, but you'll have hot spots in the system. It could be the, the DC cabling to the, the battery pack, the connection points. It could be a cell group in the battery pack that just can't get the coolant there or for whatever reason has higher resistance. It's just hard to know without having all the data. And I'd love to get Hummer EV back with all the OBD stuff on there. I just, again, was just trying to get the baseline numbers here. Uh, in a short period of time. So of course I did the full zero to 100. You can see that here, that's this blue line. Then I decided to plug in roughly at 10% and charge to 80% roughly. And you'll see that test two and test three. What we did was we actually um, did not precondition the vehicle for this test right here. We were rocking along 340 kilowatts, all good. And then I saw a big dip at 34% to 285 kilowatts. And I was like, okay, let's actually unplug at the dip and see if it just overheated. So we actually went to lunch. We parked the vehicle with the heater blasting. You'll see we dropped a couple percent when we plugged it in again for this test three and, um, you know, just left it outside, snow on the ground. It was cold outside. And then we wanted to see how much longer could we hold that charging power for just to test to see if that's where the truck actually wanted to taper charging or if it was thermal related. So we saw a big peak of 361 kilowatts on plug-in. That's no surprise. As you plug in a vehicle, um, it actually dumps a ton of current in to pull the, the pack voltage up to its charging voltage. 
and you usually see the biggest peaks on initial plug-in. So that's not surprising. Settled out around 345 kilowatts, but then very quickly tapered again to that 290, 280, 230, 270, a little wavy around here. But I think that um, it's a reasonable expectation when we start looking at these numbers somewhere around here, that mid 30% is when you come off of peak charging power. So we can be pretty sure when we look at this chart here that from zero to roughly 32 to 35%, the truck should just take everything over 300 kilowatts, all the juice, and that's a huge amount of energy right there. That's like 70 kilowatt hours roughly of just max power uh, going in. So that's awesome for road tripping. So this is a vehicle that needs to be run very far down, find 500 amp big boy chargers, and give it all the juice up high. This this truck really needs good infrastructure to make it not a pain to live with. So keep that in mind. I also should mention in this video somewhere that Hummer EV doesn't have an 80 amp onboard charger as of yet. It will be getting one, I believe in next year, model year 23 or 24, I don't remember which. Um, but I guess the, the 80 amp onboard charger from the Lyric wasn't available for the Hummer EV at the time. So it only has a 48 amp onboard charger, which takes seemingly forever to charge this thing up at home. So, um, yep. And I believe GM also has an 80% daily charging recommendation because it feels like they let you use the entire battery pack. Um, you know, when this thing dies, it basically doesn't want to move. And when you full charge it, if we look over here at the end, it's just trickling in the power which indicates very little buffer on this. So it's possible that the battery pack capacity isn't 340, 350 kilowatt hours, or excuse me, 240, 250 kilowatt hours that we originally imagined. It might actually be very close to usable. There may not be much buffer in this thing. So if you own one, I would recommend not full charging it unless you absolutely need the range for a trip, which by the way, I got 318.3 miles on a charge. And um, yeah, that's pretty good. That's at 70 miles an hour in relatively cold-ish conditions. So good range. And that's on the all-terrain tires. I'd be curious to see what it does on street tires. Probably a lot more than that. When we start looking at the charging curve at about 35%, you'll see that big dip. And that's where it tends to settle out in this very consistent sloping from about 300 kilowatts down to about 230. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, about 230. 240, somewhere in this range, at about uh, 62, 63%, 64%, just depends on where the BMS is calibrated. I imagine that these two happen around the same time. And that's where it dips. You do not want to stay at a charging station past 65% in one of these things because nothing good happens after this point. All bad. And this is where, yeah, really impressive charging speeds to 35%. I would say acceptable from 35 to 65%. And that's as expected. It's got a huge battery pack. It's not under much stress. The supporting components are the chargers are being worked really hard, uh, but the truck, the battery shouldn't really care. What's very interesting to me is why we're seeing this huge degradation of performance around this 65% mark down to almost nothing. If we come over here and look at the data and we start looking at, let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. We start looking at around 80% state of charge. Look at this, 30, 40 kilowatts. We saw a, a, a low peak of 14 kilowatts here at 84%. There's gotta be something going on between 70% and 80% state of charge on this that is really dangerous. It must be a hard operating range for the battery pack to be in. GM is is consistently on every charging test that we've done. Uh, they are really trying to protect this part of the battery pack. So I don't know what's going on there. If you do comment below, but consistently, consistently we see results down into that, you know, 20 kilowatt range above 80%. So on a road trip, 65% is your target charge. If you can make it to the next high power station at 65%, unplug and go. That's my recommendation. Actually, I would I would almost pull the 35% mark and just keep it between zero and 35, but not everyone's comfortable running it low out of spec style like I am. Uh, but that'll make for a good video. I'd like to take one of these on a trip in a video because if you have, have low power infrastructure, 50 kilowatt charging would take over four hours to fully charge this vehicle, especially if we're seeing dips down into this very low range in this 80% range. It could take five hours to charge the vehicle. Just insane charging times, and it really needs big power. 
And then we see this, this huge increase in power, almost, let's see, let's take a look at the numbers, 70 plus kilowatts, is that what we're looking at here? We're looking at 81 kilowatts at 86%, and then we get that big dip, and then it follows a normal, you know, just slope down to, to basically nothing at the top. So very interesting charging. Uh, I've done more charging testing than what's listed here, but it sort of cooperates with the results that I've had. That's how the Hummer EV charges. Uh, I think we put in, let's just take a look at the data really quick on this session right here. I just want to take a look at this last screen if we can. We put in 224 kilowatt hours. Of course, there's always going to be a little bit of losses when charging. It took pretty much forever to charge. And um, yeah, just again, huge peaks, huge power, and then huge dips in weird places. And that's the Hummer EV charging curve. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave you with a, a big version of this uh, chart right here. Of course, the link will be in the description below. I hope you enjoyed seeing how the Hummer charges. I really enjoyed the truck. Uh, this is not a mass market vehicle. It is not great for really the environment at all. It's a Hummer electric, but it's just cool and I love it. And uh, there you go. This completes all of the videos from our uh, time testing the Hummer EV. I really, really, again, just had a blast in that thing. I'd like to get it back, do some road trips, do some more off-roading. But uh, there you go. The first wave of out-of-spec Hummer content is over. And that's how it charges uh, from 0 to 100%, the entire curve. We'll see you in another video soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.